All right, today we have a new mini battery. Let's open it up. All right, and there's the battery. So this is from DJLBERMPW. That's the name. This is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour mini battery. And indeed it is quite small. All right, so we got a couple of different batteries here to compare the size to. This is our standard size that we've been used to all this time. Uh, this is a different mini from XZNY. You can see it's it's actually shorter than the XZNY mini by maybe let's see. It looks like the terminals on the XZNY come out just under uh, nine inches from the top of the terminal bolt, and this one comes in at slightly under eight and a half inches. The width on the DJLBE RMPW battery is uh, slightly over five inches and the width on the ZXNY is almost five and a half inches. Now the size in this dimension here is a little bit longer on this guy but of course if we compare it to this one it's you know quite a bit smaller i mean look at the size comparison there this is tiny compared to this so yes indeed that is a mini battery all right so let's get a weight on this we have come in at 20.4 pounds all right, so looking at the specs on top of the battery, it looks like we've got a standard charge current of 20 amps, a standard discharge at 20 amps, and we've got a max continuous discharge at 100 amps. And then in the manual, it says our max continuous charge is 50 amps. And it also says we can do four in parallel and four in series. So if we had four of these, we could connect them all in series for a pretty compact 48 volt battery. Oh look, we actually do have four of them and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So we're gonna connect these all in series to make a 48 volt battery. But first, before we do that, we need to charge up each one individually. Now you can charge them up each individually or you could parallel them all together and charge them up all at once. I'm just gonna charge them up e each individually. And the reason why you do that is these are probably gonna be at different states of charge. Like some of them may be 40%, some may be 50, some may be 60, some may be 30. And if you just went ahead and put those all in series, the, you're going to have a balance problem. The, the one with the lowest state of charge is going to dictate how much capacity your whole pack will have, and it will limit your pack. So don't ever just break these out of the box and just start wiring them up in series. They're going to be different states of charge, and you're going to have diminished capacity. So you must charge these up to full before you put them in series. All right, so I charged each one of these up individually yesterday, and they've been just settling. So I'm gonna go through one more charge on each, and it's not gonna take very long. It's just gonna kinda top them off again, and then we'll be able to wire them up in series.
All right, there we go. Now it's uh, they're all topped off again, and we're ready to put them in series. So let's do that now. And I already built up some cables so we can link them. All right, so they're all wired in series. Now we can check the final pack voltage. And we have 55.3 volts DC. All right, so I've got the battery all wired into a shunt and a inverter. So let's turn it on and run some tests here. So let's flip our breaker on. Let's turn the inverter on. And I've got it plugged in to my air conditioner. We're only pulling 27 watts, so we're still waiting for the compressor to come on. One eternity later. Okay, I hear it coming on now. We see our power going up. We're pulling over 400 watts now. All right, looks like we leveled off at about 41. And according to this shunt, it says it's going to run that for over 11 hours. <laughs> pulling about 9 amps. And we're at 53.3 volts. Yeah, I think I'm just going to let that thing run that load until it drains all the way down. It'll keep my sunroom cool today. <laughs> all right, I'll be back. All right, check it out. We are down to 3%. Uh, this is the app for the shunt, which is basically showing the same information that's here. Uh, we're still at 50 volts, 50.6 50 volts. And we have discharged five, over 5 kilowatts now. We've got 3.479 amp hours left to go. And we're still going. So, very nice. Let's take a look at each individual battery voltage. See if we're nice and balanced. All right, so here's the first one. We got 12.67, second battery. We got 12.66. Third battery, 12.65. And the fourth battery, we got 12.669. Pretty good. So they're, they're staying uh, real close to one another. So according to this, we got 24 minutes left to go. So I'll just let it keep on discharging, and I'll be back. All right, so we are down to 1%. Uh, we've got 1.19 amp hours to go. We have discharged 5.12 kilowatt hours. And uh, we're just trucking along. We're at 50 volts. Okay, so it says we're at zero. Uh, but we actually still have 0.98 amp hours to go. But uh, we've actually already exceeded the energy storage rating of these batteries because each one of these is 1,280 watt hours. 
So if we multiply that by 4, we have 5.12 kilowatt hours. And we've already exceeded that, so these are doing fantastic. Okay, here we go. All right, we have discharged all 100 amp hours. We have discharged 5.18 kilowatt hours, which that exceeds its rating. Uh, yeah, so far these have definitely passed the discharge capacity test, and obviously it's still going. Now this shunt doesn't actually tell me how many amp hours it goes over, but we should be able to continue to watch this discharged energy in kilowatt hours here. So we'll just let it keep on going and uh, see how many kilowatt hours we get. All right, so we're down to 45.2 volts. <laughs> we're still going. We've got 5.37 kilowatt hours uh, discharged so far. Uh, we can actually calculate our amp hours right now by dividing that kilowatt hours by the nominal voltage of the pack, which is 51.2. So let's do 5,370 watt hours divided by 51.2. And uh, so far we have done 104.88 amp hours. Okay, so uh, it actually just shut off <laughs> right after I got that last reading here. So I had perfect timing. Uh, so we'll call it uh, the 104.88 amp hours so pretty good I think one of the batteries must have actually sh uh, disconnected so let's see which one uh, that one's at 11.5 yeah it's this one right here the second one that one's at 10.8 that one's at 11.5. Uh, yeah, so this uh, second battery is the one that actually shut down. Probably had a low cell disconnect. But uh, yeah, there we go. Definitely does pull full capacity and then some. All right, so since we uh, discharged it all the way down until one of the batteries went into protection mode, uh, I hooked the charger up and it's back in business. We are charging at 10 amps. Uh, so everything is back in business. Uh, I'm gonna let it go ahead and just fully charge all the way back up. And it says it's gonna be about 9.57 hours. Charging at about uh, 473 watts. All right, so I'll just let it do its thing, and we'll be back to do some more stuff with these batteries. All right, so we're charged back up to 100%. We are setting at 54.75 volts. Let's check each individual battery voltage. All right, the first battery we have... 13.64 the second one we've got 13.74 the third one we got 13.62 and the last one we've got 13.76 volts so let's disconnect the charger and I want to turn our load back on to test to make sure everything is still functioning. So let's turn our breaker back on. 
and our inverter turn that back on let's turn our load back on and luckily our compressor started right off the bat <laughs> so we're pulling uh, 400 well 500 watts let's take a look at the individual battery voltages again now that's under load so the first battery we got 13.22 the second battery we got 13.23 uh, third battery we got 13.22 and the last battery we have 13.22 all right so everything seems to be functioning perfectly fine so now what I want to do is I want to open one of these guys up so we can see what it looks like on the inside all right so we got the lid pretty much off just need to pull it the rest of the way here there we go all right so let's see what we got here Looks like we have a double six or maybe a double eight gauge on the positive side. And it feels like the same on the negative side. It's got this extra layer of protection on the wire. That's really awesome. So it's got it on both sides. And so the cells are clearly prismatic very nice <laughs> so uh, we can see the bus bars right there so aluminum bus bars laser welded obviously it does have a little relief hump in it there is insulation material between the cells you can see it there very nice that is good our BMS down here on this end so can I get these cells out it's really hard in these mini batteries because there's there's no space for me to get leverage but let's try All right, guys, I'm throwing in the towel. It's just too tight in there. Uh, it's obviously got glue all on the sides, probably on the bottom. It's, it's in there. I can't get it out. So what we do know is it is indeed prismatic cells. Um, and the construction, it looks pretty good, actually. I, I don't see anything that seems, you know, off. It does, it just seems, it seems fine. It's not, uh, it's not junky or anything from what I can tell, which is pretty limited. <laughs> All right, guys, so I think that's going to be it for the video. As always, Drop me a comment down there. Let me know what your thoughts are on these batteries and using them in series like this. I'll uh, leave links down in the description and I'll catch you in the next one.